Hey guys, Anthony with The Rag Company, and today we are here at the OG Garage. Matt Mormon, what's going on? This is my house garage. It's your house yeah. garage. Yeah, my sanctuary. I've invited you into my promised land here. Happy to be I'm glad here, you're too. here. I'm glad Thank, you're here. Thank you. So we've already uh, <clears throat> shot a couple <clears throat> videos this week, right? Done some uh, garage tours, which has been really fun. So here, today, we're uh, we're doing a tier list. You've never done this before. I didn't even know what the heck you're talking about. Yeah, I had no idea. So we're gonna be rating these things. <clears throat> you're gonna be S through F, right? S being superior, the best, the, the, the cream of the crop. F being maybe a fail. But we're gonna go through and rank these things, right? I think we'll agree on mostly everything, right? I think not. We have, so, I think we have different standards in life. You have loose standards and I have very strict and stringent standards. I have loose-ish, loose-ish standards, not loose. Well, you have, you have strong standards and then no standards on certain things. So certain things you have strong standards on, we're about to find that out. And other things you have very loose, if not no standard or negative standards. I call it wiggle room, that's and what then, I call And that. then Compromise. attached to excuses. You know, so that's what I hear, or but. We have our tier list here on the computer mm -hmm. and okay. Jimmy has gone ahead and coordinated this whole thing. So I'm gonna bring okay. up a topic here. We're gonna pick something out and then throw it out on the list and we're gonna judge okay. where it's gonna, I'm gonna land. I'm gonna try not to look at the picture so you can hit me with okay. it. Okay, uh, going to what you've been currently working on right now, okay. I believe this is uh, house renovations. Home yeah. renovation, where do you rank that? Do you rank that as something that like, yes, that's a S tier thing or do you rank it as something that you're kind of just whatever about? How mean, passionate are you about? You mean about? just doing a renovation? No, I, yeah. I, that's a D. You're at a D. I hate it. Okay, all right. I hate renovating more than I hate polishing. See, I think that doing something, renovating, polishing, you know, modifying a car, um, I don't like any of that, the process. I don't like any of that stuff. Okay. Uh, but I'm addicted to the result. And, okay. and you have to do those things. It's just like, yeah. I go to college. I didn't like college, but mm -hmm. I like the result. Okay. Uh, I don't like going to the gym, but I like the result. Okay. Um, I don't like going on a diet, but I appreciate the result. And so I think that with the renovating like Adam's house, I had a willingness to do, like I'm carrying his toilet out and poo waters, you know, falling all over my leg in the, oh, you know, on that. camera. Yeah, I would hate I that. could throw yeah. it in the dumpster. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be the CEO of this company, you know, like all these fancy cars and here. I'm like, I'm literally, I kid you not, I'm on his floor. We didn't have a dustpan. Yeah. And so I had like a broken piece of the back of a cabinet and I'm sweeping with, a, with a bro the broom that they would scoop up their dog's poo with. And I'm scooping that up to put it into a garbage can so I could throw it away. And I said, yeah. what is my life to come? But I appreciate that process because of the result. Okay, I can, I can, and, and I so can see it. Yeah. Result S. Renovation D-ish. Okay, would you say, we can say home renovation, upgrades, things like that, C? No, D, D minus. No, it doesn't work like that. We're trying to figure out compromise here. So I mean, if uh, I say uh, it's a C uh, and you say it's a D, we say it's a C. Uh, this is such a nuanced topic, because going back to your car thing, you and I like to buy, well actually, I think you would, you would also agree that I like to buy a nice car to start. Yeah. as nice as I can get. Yeah. So we get as nice as we can start with, yeah. rather than, you know, a lot of people like Freddie, a friend, you know, Tavares likes mm -hmm. to buy the worst thing he can find, Ed Bullion, mm -hmm. they like to buy the worst yeah. car they can find and make it just slightly worse. Okay. I want to find like my Evo here is the best, or my E92 here, yeah. the best car I can find and I can afford and then make it better. Okay, yeah. But I still don't like the making it better process all that much. I'll give you a D on this one. I'll okay. just say, okay. well, we'll say home okay. renovation. Okay. I'm gonna give you a D, I'll give you a compromise on here because you okay. you're, you're gonna you're gonna learn here eventually, you know, yeah, how, yeah. how this is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so next up here, I'm gonna pull up, um, we're gonna get into like one, we'll get into like one kind of tool-ish related thing. Okay. DI water, spotless water systems. Like just a DI water in general. What in you, general? In general. Uh, and we're saying how important it is. Is that kind of how important your it is giving, is giving it a rating? Like I'm going to go ahead and say that I think I'm going to give it an A rating. DI water to me is an A rating because where we live, I hate water spots. I mm -hmm. hate hard water, and I don't like feeling rushed when I'm washing. So having DI water makes yeah. a massive difference for my process. I wouldn't say it's an S tier because it, it's not like an absolute necessity. Right, you but can do it without. You it, can right? do without it, you, yeah. and some people do. Um, but like for me, once I switch to it, I don't think it'll ever go back because I need it. So to me, it's an A. Yeah, I think A as well. Um, okay. I'm actually working on some new tech and, and developing a new solution in DI. Okay. I think it's an A as well. I don't think it's an S because I don't think everybody needs it all the time. I think you have decent water in your house, then you can use it sometimes. 
you know, if you're in a rush, but in some areas like where you're at, you know, the desert type areas, Arizona, Phoenix, Tucson, you yeah. know, Southern California, uh, I think it's a must in yeah. some cases. So it might even be an S for some of them. Yeah. It's for me, it's probably a, a B or C in necessity. More, yeah. It's more of a convenience thing. Um, and so I think it's a solid A. Kay. You know, it can really improve your life. Kay. We can agree. Yeah, there we go. I Perfect. I like this. We are, we're getting on the same page here. This is, this is, yeah, okay. this is going to be good for the rest of this. Mm -hmm. Husky tools. Um, and we're taking this as a whole brand. So I'm talking Husky cabinets, Husky tools as a yeah. full brand, Husky everything. I think I'd choose Husky. I'd put Husky in the C category. That their black cabinets look pretty good. You know, they're not yeah. great cabinets. I would choose Husky over New Age, personally. No way. Um, uh, their tools, I mean, it, if, okay. if you're in a pinch and I need some crescent wrench or I need some something, um, I'm gonna get that. Now, I would argue, why would you buy Husky when they have Milwaukee in the same store and you could get a, you know, a Milwaukee tool is gonna be, you know, a solid B, you know, okay. tool. But I, I, I think I'd say C. Okay. I think, I think, because I, I, I do agree with you on the Milwaukee thing. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. sold at the same store and we're, we're literally on the, the same shelf, right? Yeah. And you're looking at maybe a $16 wrench or ratchet yep. and you got a $22 ratchet, right? Is it right. worth spending the extra six? Possibly, I maybe, think always, maybe, yeah. always. It, it also depends on like if I was like visiting you, and like I did, or and you didn't. Let's say I was visiting you. You didn't have any tools. I'm out of town. I'm gonna spend the 16 bucks because I'm just gonna either throw it away or give it away or leave it there. But if I was gonna buy the tool and keep it, mm -hmm. I mean, you absolutely spend the six bucks. Okay. Unless maybe you were planning on buying like the best tool like that was going to be a tool you're going to have for the rest of your life you're going to buy some japanese or german magical thing yeah. in the future okay. uh, but what i found with tools it's not that much more to do the best okay it's really not okay and i i, I kind of learned that i would say i learned that recently when we went over the to the to the og uh uh, HQ there and you know and you, I, I thought the screwdrivers were more expensive than what it was. But like I would never buy like a Husky air compressor you know or you know something that was like. That, that's my air compressor. I have uh -huh. a Husky air compressor. <laughs> it's a Husky silent flow. It's like the best thing for the buck. It's 220. It's like 200 bucks. Why wouldn't you buy like a DeWalt or something at least for gosh sakes. Then they're made in the same place but No yeah. I, I think I think that the Husky is a superior Air compressor. Yeah, it and operates at like 4,000 RPM. It's like 120 decibels loud. It's not. It's, it's not that loud. It's just spewing it's oil Husky everywhere. It's silent flow. It's in the name. It's silent flow. Mm. Okay, but you know what? You already said still, you gave, you gave it a C. Yeah, right? C, C. Which is better than what I thought because I would say it's a B. I don't think that there's a middle category, and I think that there's another brand that I'm gonna, we're going to be talking about here soon that I am going to probably put in that A ish, B ish category. So, yeah. so we, ha we have arrived at the same place, just a little bit. Just different a little paths. bit different. Yeah, so we'll yeah, yeah. still say it's a C, okay. but again, right? If it's my lifestyle. I'm a Husky guy. Most my Husky, I have Husky cabinets. You I are got like hus physically Husky. I'm <laughs> I used to be physically Husky too. Give me, give me I a, thought that's what you were saying. Give Sorry. me a little bit of time. <laughs> that's what right? you were saying. Give me a little bit of time here. Gosh, I'll get back to my fighting weight. Um, but no, I'm, I'm just Husky cabinets. I'm Husky tools. I'm Husky oh. air compressor. Oh, that's what you meant. I, you said I'm a Husky guy. I thought you meant I'm a... Like I wear husky sized clothing. I'm not offended, Matt. That's fine. It's okay. Anyway, all right. Car lifts in general. No mm. brand of car lift, but mm. we're just talking about the lift, the necessity of having a lift. Whether mm. it's a, a two post, whether it's a you know scissor lift, whatever it may be, something that gets a car in the air. Where do you rate that in terms of usability, ranking, how important it is in working on your own car, mm. detailing all of that? Man, I, I think that this is one of those level up things. You get to the level, you can't go backwards. Yeah. I think it's got to be an S for me. Okay. You know, it's like if, if you'd asked me this 10 years ago, it's, it would probably put it A or B. Like, I'm okay. going to get that someday. Like, I think it's necessary. But now, once you have it, it's like kind of, it's like getting air conditioning in the garage. Like, I lived with that. it, lived with it till I was 40 years old. And then once you get it, it's like, Man, I, I just can't imagine living without it. Okay. Uh, and so I, I think it's gotta be an S. Okay. I don't know what it's like to have a lift, personally, right? So this is kind of where I'm gonna, uh, I, I, we know what it's like to have it at TRC, right? Yeah. And we use it pretty often, I would say pretty often for many things. I just got a set of quick jacks, which I can't think you put into the lift category, but it's something yeah. closer closer to that. I don't know what it's like yet, because I haven't unboxed them or even used them yet. But I imagine that's even gonna be a step better than what I've been doing with 
There's some pros and cons to those because you have to deal with them. You know, they're like 90 pounds a piece and yeah. they're annoying to deal with. Well, hopefully, moving it'll get, hopefully it'll get me in better shape so you'll accept me someday. Well, you'll find it's just annoying and frustrating, you know, okay. to deal, to deal okay. with them. Okay. But people who have them love them. I was one of the very few that I just didn't like them. Okay, you know? all right. So I, I don't know, I don't, again, I don't know yet. We're, we're going to see. So um, you're saying S tier. If I could have a lift in my garage, I would absolutely have a full size lift in my garage. My garage isn't tall enough sure. for a full lift. So I'm gonna go with what you're saying and say S tier because that is the goal and that is the dream mm. for even me, right? Eventually, I would love to have a lift in my garage. That would yeah. be amazing if I'm doing DIY projects or whatever it is. The only reason so, I don't have a lift in this garage is because I have a lift a mile down mm -hmm. the road. Next up here, this will be a fun, a fun yeah. one, uh, hex lights. Mm, that's an F, solid F, F minus. F you, F everybody. Okay, well let's bring it to a baseline here, all right? You gave it, gave it up. You gave it up. That's a pretty F base. minus, right? Yeah. It's lighting still, right? Terrible Think, lighting. Super it, tacky. It, but it is lighting though, Matt. So I would rather just use the sun coming through my windows than having those lights. That's, that's literally ridiculous. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Hex lighting, you mm -hmm. take somebody that's gone from a garage with no lighting at all. They got mm -hmm. bulbs, they got little bulbs in their I'd hand. rather have a bulb. Why? That makes no sense. Well, you can get a better bulb that's a better quality than that junk. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. They're hard to install, right? Because- No, you plug them in. You just plug them in, you, you, you hang you them should, or... There should never in your life be a light on the ceiling that you plug in to anything. It shouldn't be plugged in. It should be hardwired to a switch. I'm sure you, I'm sure if you had a minor electrical knowledge, you could probably figure out a way to do that. But the thing <clears> is- You should never put a light on the ceiling that needs to be plugged in. You are the hex. Never. This is the hex. Mm -hmm. You're everything a hex is, and you don't like hex lights. That literally is like, that's, that's, that doesn't make any sense. The, it's your brand on, the, on the, the ceiling. The simple argument is that in, I don't know how long it's gonna be, 24 months, maybe six, five years, People are gonna say, what was I thinking? Putting these stupid lights, then, it, then I can't, like, all I see is the lights in my paint, you know, and, yeah. and the quality is terrible. Like nobody's making like a 90 CRI, like really great hex light. They say they're 90 CRI, but they're not 90 CRI. You've they're you've, total garbage. You've tested that, you know that for I sure. I just know it. Cause those hex lights, they should be like $15,000. You know, as many lights as you get, but no, they're, they're not. not. They're, they're like $15. They're very affordable for the masses. Like for $15. Every... Yes. Not $150, like 15. I think we, Total garbage. I think we paid more than that at the rag company. I, so we're kind of afraid because we have- So the lighting and... quality is terrible. It looks not great. It's not great light. Right, so it doesn't doesn't fill the room properly. Yeah. Um, you look like a freaking idiot when you have them. I, as soon as I see that, I know you don't know anything about the garage, nothing. <laughs> and I know that you probably suck at detailing. You probably also have terrible tools. Uh huh. Okay, keep going. You know, your desk yeah. is a mess. Your brain is a mess. Your finances are a mess because you let that into your life. It's just weak. This all starts with the lights. This is it's this a is, microcosm. This... <laughs> Because here's the thing, really Anthony, it's, it's not, they're not easy to do. They're not easy to install. They're not easy to set okay. up. Okay, it's hard. Yeah. It's not easy to get straight. You're working twice as hard for something that's twice as bad. Okay, what's a better lighting? What's a better lighting? Anything. Anything. Just Anything. go to Home Depot and pick any light. It's better. I can promise you that. Any All right. light. So uh, he's bringing it, get in F. I'm trying to keep it as like a real, so I'm not saying that I love hex lights. I'm saying that, I appreciate that there's actual lighting because I hate working in the darkness, so it's a step above. Yeah, but your eyes are getting bulb. chopped out of your head with terrible light. It makes it fatiguing. It's terrible. Okay. I'm gonna give hex lights a C. Oh my gosh, you're not even close. He's giving it an F. Okay, can we meet it? If at there was a, it was a G, it's a Z in terrible. Okay, I, I cannot be more ma more adamant about this. That th I'll be. This will be when you're when 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 the when the 25 year old puts it in his garage and he works his tail off to get those lights. And let's say he spent a bunch of money and three of them don't work. And then he's dealing with the company. He's getting all bent out of shape. And he's yeah. plugging it into an outlet in the ceiling, and which is ridiculous. And then um, and when he's 40 years old, he's going to yeah. come to me and Matt and said, Matt, you were right. You were right. All right. I don't even need to be right on this because I'm not, I would, I'm not okay. doing it. 75% of the reason why I'm coming to Boise is to rip those lights off the ceiling with a sledgehammer. Okay. 
So here's the deal. And, and, and an effort to actually get Matt to fully commit to coming to Boise, right? Getting him on a plane and coming all the way up to Idaho. You know, I'm probably gonna give him the F on this one, right? <laughs> I, w I would like to see this at a D and we can revisit this. I understand end. what you're saying. I understand why people like them. I get it. Okay. It's just not, it's not based in any sound reality of function. Okay. It's based in, hey, I need some light. Hey, I like the it's pretty cool style. Um, it really makes, takes my garage to the next level. Okay. And then they paint the walls with glossy paint. And they just do all the things that you would do if you don't know anything. Okay. Uh, and so I'm, I'm here like teaching you all the mistakes that have been made. I would have bought them too. I guarantee you I probably would have bought them when I was okay. 21, you know, or 22. Okay. You know? Right. And, and I would have, you know, a bit of, run up my credit card and, you know, I can't pay for them, but I'm going to get them anyway. And then they're going to be a little bit wonk. A couple yeah. of them are going to be a little blinky. There's some, you know, wires hanging, but I'm like, yeah, it's good enough. Good enough. This is I most. No, I, is I what, wouldn't have done it. Have you ever seen I'm, I'm lying so, to myself. There's no way I would have done have it. Have you ever seen somebody so passionate about hating lighting. I don't think I've ever seen somebody so bad, but you know what, here, here's, okay, we're gonna move on to a different topic yeah, now. Yeah, you make me okay. happier. I'm, I'm too wound up. Now everybody was getting, they're vibing with me here, and now they're like, this freaking loser, he sucks. He has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll move this to something else that maybe we can, maybe, maybe agree on, maybe disagree on, I'm not sure. Milwaukee tools, because we already yeah. touched up on the Husky. Milwaukee mm -hmm. tools. To me, they're, to me, I, I, I don't really know anything better than Milwaukee that I've used personally, so I'm gonna come in and probably say A, A tier. I think the half inch impact is an S tier tool, right? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. be somewhere near A and S. Yeah, I mean, I think it's S in general for, for there's, there's some subset of grouping of tools okay. that's S. You know, there's a lot of tools that are aspirational that you don't need that you could, you know, get, get a buy without. Um, but if you're talking like, quarter inch impact for, you know, hanging pictures in your house. Mm -hmm. If you're talking like M12, you know, drill driver, hammer drill driver, you know, yeah. or M18 hammer drill driver, you need to have that in your life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think every man and woman needs those three tools. Yep. It's be nice to have the, uh, like the mid torque impact for removing lugs and stuff. That's a luxury, but yeah. you could use a breaker bar for that. You could use yeah. the tire iron for, for doing that. Um, you can't, you know, you can't really, I think, live without at least a hammer drill, you know, in your life. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, there's other great brands too, you know, Festool, Bosch, Makita, DeWalt, I mean, they're all good. I mean, even the base Ryobi stuff is, you know, it's made by the same company as, as Milwaukee. Um, I think you're better off having that stuff than not in your life. Okay. And so I think it has to be an S. Okay. You know, it's, that's like one of the first things you do is go get yourself like a four or five piece tool set. My first, my first power tools I ever bought, actually I bought, I didn't borrow, were Milwaukee tools, right? Mm -hmm. The Milwaukee fuels. And yeah. I was pretty, I was pretty stoked on that. I was, I don't know how many years ago, right? And I was like, heck yeah, these are amazing, right? And then I bought the half inch impact out of necessity because I was working on a project. The big like, heavy one, the, the big, big fatty? The, the big yeah. fatty. Yeah. And I was working on something, I could not get a, a nut off. And I was like, man, I need something that's not like crazy torque, right? Went down, bought that thing. It was instantly like four hundred fifty bucks, and your butts it, pucker. And it was, and then, it, was yeah. the, it was the, but it was the best thing I ever yeah, bought, yeah, right? Yeah. And it, that thing has saved me countless times. So, anyways, uh, we're gonna go Milwaukee as a brand. We go S tier. We're gonna probably plenty of Milwaukee lovers are gonna like this. So uh, yeah, my second choice is probably Makita. Will be kay. my second choice of tools. Then maybe you know maybe Flex. Okay. Um, you know, Festool is a bit more specialized, you know, they're, they, with their impacts and stuff, I don't think they're great. Bosch has some interesting stuff to me. Uh, you know, and then DeWalt, something about the yellow just grosses me out. Okay. So uh, moving on here, uh, a next kind of broad subject here, because we kind of talked about home renovation. We're gonna talk about uh, garage renovation. Okay. So just the necessity of doing this, right? Is it for everybody? Do you have to do it? Is this an S thing for you? And I think the answer is yes. I mean, that's kind of, it's kind of maybe a little bit obvious, but you can maybe see from an outside perspective, it, would this more likely land in an A to most people, common people, a B to common people? What do you think? So to me, like if we go back to your original renovations and how you rate that and part mm -hmm. sucks, but yeah. you, 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 you need to live, you, I live in the house, not in the garage, Yeah, the garage, but the garage is the anchor. Okay. You just saw, I don't know, they probably saw on camera, my wife and kids came through the garage. 
I pull in first thing when the garage. Mm -hmm. The garage is where we exit the home. So mm -hmm. it's the, you know, it's the centerpiece of the house. It's the most amount of square footage of any room in the house. Okay. So to me, the garage, for me, the garage is the anchor of my obsession, right? Mm -hmm. I like the cars, I like the tools, I like the lights, yeah. I like detailing, but it all happens in the garage. So the garage is the thing that pulls us all together. Yeah. My house is attached to the garage. That's the way I view it. Uh, and so I need to be renovating the house. I need to be improving the house because, you know, the house is attached, attached to the garage. To the, to the so clearly, future. yeah, S, yeah. S for me. Um, okay. Even if you're not a garage or car person, you still probably enter through the garage. You still yeah. store all your yard gnomes and, and broken lawn mowers in the garage. You know, mm -hmm. the garage is a very important spot in your house. This thing, this is what drives me crazy, is realtors never pay, take pictures of the garage. Never. It's crazy. Ever. They never take pictures of the garage. But I agree with you because for me, this is, this is a weird thing. I feel when my garage is cleaned, right, and it's not being just like boxes thrown into it or my wife, she's gotten groceries and all the extra Costco boxes go in the garage for me to break down. What are you getting at Costco? There's three so, of you. So everything. I live, what? I live my life, we live my life at Costco. We go I there. bet you spend like three times the amount you would have spent if you just got like what you need at a regular store. Probably, but I have so much of it now. So much of what? Peanut butter. But I go to Costco once a week, so it kind of counteracts <laughs> everything that What's Costco is actually meant to be. So they have fruits, they have vegetables, they have tons of just high quality everything there from other brands. Yeah, but it's all pro. It's all you know, junk. Like it's the junkiest version. It's the cheapest bulk version. So what brands at Costco are cheap? No, but you would go to like <laughs> Sprouts or Whole Foods or something to get like locally grown yeah. produce. I don't want some yeah. pesticide filled yeah. nonsense. Anyway. You know, the meat there is gross meat. Anyways, you know? moving on. So we're going to go ahead and give that an S tier. This is... <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how this works Anyways. for you, you Costco people. It makes well, no sense. I and you're dealing with all the people, everybody's mad at each other and you're banging carts into each other and stuff. I'm not banging carts into each other. They don't even have bags. Like you got to carry it out in a box. I think it's That's the weirdest, crazy I guess thing that I've is ever the, heard. That is the downside. You know what happens box. when I go to the grocery store? There's a very nice person that bags my stuff for me, and then they say, "Mr. Mormon, would you like me to take your stuff to your car?" I said, "No, thank you. Thanks for bagging my stuff." What and I stores go out, are you going to? Like a regular grocery store, Publix. You know, regular. Place. Never had anybody ask me to take my stuff to my car for me. You know, they'll take your cart back for you if you want. It's mm -hmm. magical. Okay. Anyway. And it costs like a dollar more. And I, I'd wager I'd probably spend a lot less money than you because I don't buy five pounds of ketchup that I got to throw away because it goes bad. You use it. You use it no matter what. Yeah. Moving on. So we, here we go. We have some other <laughs> brands here we got to get to and some other exciting things. Um, so how about let's, let's bring some detailing into the, uh, okay. the realm here, right? Yep. Rinseless washing. As, as a whole, right? Not a particular product, but just as a, as a whole. Rinseless washing. I think it's a C for me. It's an S for me. Absolute necessity. It has changed a lot of the ways I wash cars. I think it's just a, a fantastic way of maintaining something when you are, don't have time or you don't have the yeah. tools and necessities. I don't buy the time part. I don't think it saves that much time. I think it, oh my gosh. It only saves time if you're doing a superficial wipe down, superficial cleaning. But if you're doing like a full, like if you're going clean to clean, clean versus clean, waterless wash clean versus an actual soap and bucket, uh -huh. you know, pressure washer clean, you're getting like maybe 60% of the way. It's very superficial. You, my friend, have never seen Mr. Levi Gates rinseless wash a car. That man is fast. Well, that's great. Fast. But how much of the car is he missing? So I'm going to say S, you said C. Yeah. Uh, now on the paint and if I want a superficial clean or if I'm traveling to like a car event, you should be using a waterless or rinseless. I usually like to do rinseless. I'll take a bucket, water, gamma seal, and then take it with me okay. and I'll pre-soak whether it's O&R or I use N914 because I don't want anything left behind. And um, mm -hmm. so how about this? I made some compromises for you. You make okay. a compromise. For I me. can come up a little bit. Okay. How Especially since uh, I'm cheating a little because I'm in Florida and it's not cold yeah. here. So okay. that's true. So compromise a little with me. Come up to an A. Oh, from C to A. So from C to A. No, hey, I'll I go B plus. B plus. There is that's not a this is not an option. How about we go to A and we'll try to find some compromise for something else that you love. Mm. 
in a little while. I've, already, I've is, given you like two. A is strong. That's strong. A is, a is strong. It's because it's a strong. All right, I'll area. give you A because for some people where you live, it it it's a it is I'm moving probably that up an right S. now before he changes his mind. All right, nice A. But this I don't awesome. I don't like that. It's way dirtier to do a rinseless or waterless no, than it is it's to king. Do. It's king rinseless. It's amazing. I hope you all convert to rinseless if you haven't. Moving on. So uh, when you, you know, get big breaks we, someday. Someday. And your brakes are all squeaky because you're just doing rinseless washes because you're never getting the the rotors cleaned out, the calipers cleaned out. Mm -hmm. Then you'll then you'll then you'll go down. Someday we'll see, right? When I get my uh, when I get my GT3 someday. Correct. Wink, wink. All right. So moving on here, uh, we've got a couple other things. I have this one. This is a good one. Um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Swiss Tracks flooring, garage flooring in general. I'm going to shock you a little bit here. I'm going to say B. I am shocked. I don't like plastic interlocking tile. It's not my preference. I don't sure. want to like it. The problem is, is we don't have any, any really great alternatives. Epoxy is an F minus. Um, a, the, um, okay. All right. the, the problem with porcelain tile is the expense. You know, the install expense, the expense of a proper porcelain tile. It's not even literally an option I would have thought right. of. Well, you're talking 20 bucks, you know, 10 to $20 a square foot, okay. you know, to do like a proper slip rated, you know, proper weight rated, you know, porcelain type tile. Yeah. Uh, and there are also some negatives to porcelain tile. Like for example, you know, leaves will get trapped in Swiss tracks in the first couple of tiles. But, you know, when you have porcelain tile, I would have to sweep out my garage every time I came out to Correct. it. I'm giving Swiss tracks, you know, a B minus C ish, uh, just because it's still plastic tile. Um, there's some real pros to it that help offset, but you know, it's not really my preference. If I had a choice, I would do porcelain tile and then I'd have a person hired to then maintain my floors for me okay. once or twice a week. Okay. And I can't do that. And so Swiss tracks is what I get. Okay. So sometimes you need to, you need to sacrifice and get a C. So I think, I think that I like the look of it. I think it adds a finished look to I'm your garage. I'm going B. B. B is where it belongs. Sorry. Okay. I think it adds a look to the garage. I think I like that. I don't like the idea of the dirt. I don't want to have to deal with the cleanup. That's the best part of the whole thing. I know. Is I the like dirt. That. Yeah. I don't that like is that. like number one of one best part of the whole know, floor. But it's so, so to your point, right? You, you know, you like things that are clean. You have things that are proper and all that. You're just not able to see it. This is the, this is the, this is the, the textbook. I can't see it. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. But this is the technical de definition of sweeping the dirt under the rug and then putting the rug back it's in. It's equivalent to sweeping the dirt, putting it in your trash can, and then t choosing when to take the trash out. That's what it's more like. I got kind of a point there. <laughs> right? It's in the trash can. Okay. As long as like my, tra my trash has trash, my trash yeah. can has trash in it, and then I choose to take it out when trash day comes. Yeah, well, what if the trash starts smelling? What if you start? Then you know, I take it out. So I'm gonna say C, you're gonna say B. Yeah, solid B. I say, I would meet you at B minus, but we still gotta land in the B category. Yeah. I mean, you did work with me quite a bit on the rinse list, so we're gonna go ahead and- Yeah, go ahead yeah and I land. jumped two our, our first, Our first B is what we mm. have. Yeah, okay. So that's, we're, hey, we're, we're getting somewhere. Gotcha. Okay, so because we were just talking about it and because you seem to have some advice here, we'll, we'll just jump straight into that. Mm. So epoxy flooring. It is about the installer. Okay. Installer does matter. Absolutely, 100%. But sometimes you get the best installer in the world and then it's about where you live and what's yeah. under your slab and what the water table looks like. Yeah. The biggest problem with epoxy is you can't just take it off. The chances of one, you've got to have a lot of things line up. I got to have the right kind of concrete. I got to have the right slab. I got to have the right installer. I got to choose the right product. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got to come in in the right conditions where my tires aren't too hot and all of that. The shinier it is, the more you'll see those imperfections. But if yeah. all you care about is Instagram photos, it looks great in photos, always. Yes, looks my amazing. problem is in person, almost never looks good. I think that, oh man, it's tough. My complaint is a weird, really weird complaint. All my stuff has to come out. Everything yeah. has to come out, right? And yeah. so some people, it's not a big deal, but for me, I go, okay, so where does it go? Where do I put everything? I put it in my driveway for how long? A how day long, how long does it take? I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that idea of that. So yeah. 
that's it's a, it's a minor complaint, right? But also, does epoxy cost quite a bit? It does, right? Is it a perfect thing? No, it's not a perfect thing. Mm -hmm. I've seen epoxy fail on concrete mm -hmm. right after it was laid, just days after, because mm -hmm. it didn't stick right, right? It didn't stick and everything started mm -hmm. coming up and I go, And crap. a lot would argue, well, that was installed. Not always. Sometimes yeah. you can have a great installer and sometimes it doesn't work out great. Yeah. And all the people that are installers that are, own a business are yelling at the screen right now saying, oh, I'm the best. And, but if you were really honest, I bet you there's dozens that failed on you. Okay, I'm gonna come in at a C. So if I'm an F, that D. makes us a D. D. I, I'd, be, okay. I'd be good with a D. Okay, we'll go D, okay. And I just think it's a big mistake because most people doing it don't have the funds to do it or you're making a sacrifice somewhere else in your life to do it and I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, the other problem is a lot of people have epoxy but then they have hex lights so they can't see any of the problems so it works out great for them. Okay, yeah. moving on. All right, moving on before we upset anybody else here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get into some pressure, some hot pressure washer talk here. So oh, okay. uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into this and we'll, we'll kind of move into the next pressure washer. Yeah. So uh, active pressure washers. Yeah, I mean, I think it's something that needs to exist. The, the active, I think they're the first ones that have attempted and have done a really good job with the 2.0 yep. to, to, to make something in the mid tier. Mm -hmm. You know, that you know, two to four hundred dollar range uh, that actually performs. It performs quite well. Okay. Uh, myself personally, I've used an active a couple times now. I was surprised. I was impressed. I was impressed with what it was because, I mean, I'm rocking Karcher Cube. So mm -hmm. I'd pay, I'd pay three fifty dollars probably for one. I mean, I think, I, think it was, I, think it was, I think it was good. I would say probably my rating there with just my first impressions really. I mean, this is kind of more of your, your, your line of stuff. B? Yeah, it's a B. That's it's a what B? it is. Okay. The 2.0 is a B. The 52 VE52 is a C, you know. Okay. But I think the Karcher Cube gets a B as well because I, I think the Karcher Cube is probably a bit more reliable. Um, Karcher has their own factory in China, whereas, you know, a lot of the others are built in a similar similar place, the Ryobis yeah. and the Actives and all of that. Okay. Um, but the Active, the, where the Active has an advantage is in technology, the patent on the five plunger design. So there's five, basically, the, it's the, the kind of the difference between like a V, a four cylinder and a V6, or yeah. a four cylinder and a V8. They got more displacement. Speaking of the opposite of Active, you guys have not been very active in subscribing to the Rag Company YouTube channel. Subscribe to us, subscribe to Obsessed Garage. What are you waiting for? It's free, it costs nothing, and there's a button right there. Make sure to hit it. But, but they're building, it's a similar build yeah. to the, with a few tweaks to a entry level mass produced, you know, built to a price point pressure washer, built to fail. Your Karcher Cube is built to run a certain amount of hours and just get tossed. Sweet. Makes me feel good about my Karcher Cube. No, I sell Karcher Cubes. Yeah, that's what uh, I'm And I think that the that, yeah. um, that that's what it's you know if you know that going into it, yeah. and you are not entitled and you have realistic expectations, then you 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 would you know you have a good experience. Cool. Uh, now we're going to jump into what you would call uh, the Porsche of the mm -hmm. uh, of the pressure washer world. We're going to bring up uh, Krenzla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I don't think a pressure washer is an S for anybody. Because a pressure washer doesn't need, you don't need it. I don't think you need a pressure washer like you need a drill driver, you know, in your life. Yeah, yeah, I can um, see that, yeah. Um, Prenzla gets an A, it's a luxury item, it's great to have. You can wash a car with a hose and bucket. So you can wash a car, waterless wash, rinseless wash, which we talked about with none of those, you know, yeah. with, a, with a sprayer. Specs aren't the only thing that matters. There's other things that go into it. I've yeah. had this fight with, you know, Samsung Galaxy versus a, an iPhone. Yeah. You know, it's not all about just specs and just raw bench testing performance. I've got to hold it in my hand. I got to use the product. When I use a Krenzla, the combined, you know, usability functionality of it and build quality makes me choose it over say an AR630, which has actually superior spec performances. Um, all I know as far as the Krenzla stuff goes is that we've had the same one at the TRC HQ. Um, in a room, not wall mounted, not anything fancy, literally just sitting on a shelf, we've plugged it in, that thing's never filled us once. And we've had it for what, four years now, three and a half years. We've never changed any oil on it. We've never done any maintenance on it. We haven't done, we haven't done crap on it. And yeah. you know what? 
the thing works, it performs beautifully. We never had any issues, so to me it's an A. Um, I like the idea of rinsing things off, but I think you could still use a hose to rinse things off. So, A. See, to me, I think it'd be easier to go backwards on not having a pressure washer than having a lift, and that's why I said I'd have a lift, okay. an S, and okay. a pressure washer. I would and... prefer a lift over a pressure washer as yeah. well. So, uh, we're gonna go here to A. All right, so um, kind of, yeah, kind of on the detailing, we'll go on the detailing spectrum here and we'll move on to something pretty, pretty random. Um, ceramic coatings. Mm. So just in general, right? Not, no, there's a picture of Excel, but we're just gonna say as a whole, mm -hmm. ceramic coatings as a whole in the industry. Hmm. Mm. I just, think it's an S now. Do you? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I thought he was gonna hit me with like a C. No, I think I think a coating is is an S. Um, I think it's become mainstream. I think every single I think even like soccer moms know about ceramic coating. I don't think they fully understand it, but I think it's become like a, a, a mass known mm -hmm. thing that uh, has kind of taken over for the, the you know the dealership warranty nonsense of like Xylon or other bull crap that they pretend like they're installing but they really don't. <sighs> I think a coating is a necessity. I think it's yeah. I think it's important to have, but I think you do need a polish to put it on, and and that's for the part that I would, I'd say now probably seventy five percent of coatings probably don't get a polish before they go on. But ceramic coatings, they've they've proven themselves, right? I think that they're at the point where mm -hmm. they've proven their worth to the people who need them, who mm -hmm. use them properly, who maintain them properly, and all that. But are ceramic coatings bulletproof? No. They still get etched, they still get scratched. You may have to repolish things. You take your hand on a dusty panel and you go like that, right? You're gonna micromar everything. So they're not a bulletproof thing, but if you know how to maintain them, which isn't harder than just washing them properly, you're gonna get your money's worth. Yeah, in, in some ways, a ceramic coating makes taking care of the guard more difficult. It's more fingerprint prone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's uh, because it's shinier, you know, stuff shows up. It's more like oils and your, your, you know, will tend to stick to it in some, some instances. It may not look as good in, in some instances or when it starts to fail, mm -hmm. a like failing coating is worse than in yeah. some instances than not having it. I, I think I need to come down to an A, you know, I don't, it, it's, it's not really a necessity. The thing I struggle with with cars, anytime like the Raptor out there is completely neglected in eight hours, Mm -hmm. I can make it look brand new. Yeah. So it makes you second guess, like, why do I do all this? You know, why do I maintain it? I think the answer to that is we just wash the Evo and it makes it an enjoyable experience to Absolutely. maintain 100%. your pride and joy. But I can almost always come back and fix a car yeah. know, short of oxidation or, or short of a, uh, you know, clear coat failure or something like that. Okay. I was going to be at an S as well. Could you come up to an S? because of where we're at today. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, I initially said okay. S, that's so my gut was telling me. Okay, so. all right, so we're at S for ceramic coating. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, so next up here, um, we're gonna throw a random one into this because yeah. I think this is just a fun one. Driving simulators, racing simulators. Mm. I think it's a C. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I just don't have a lot of interest in it. I have, you know, I have this amazing one, right, yeah. at, uh, at, my, my, at the house, but it's more for the, the absurdity of it, and I had a vision for that room in the in the house I have in the mountains, okay. um, and I wanted to complete the room and complete the house. It's just not a lot of fun to me. Like I don't have a lot of desire to do it. Have you? Are you uh, playing cool. the right? Are you playing the right games? You have the right equipment. Yeah, AC, and you know, okay. and then right. I I prefer. Um, uh, I racing over over a set of courses, but I racing elitists. Those are it's a certain group of people. Jimmy's behind the camera just nodding, but you know the thing that's dumb about I racing is you're driving cars you're never going to drive, so that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, that I was like, well, why, where, where's the like regular cars? They're like, oh, yeah. we don't have those. We only have RSR, you know, whatever, Indy yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. that's stupid. Yeah. Um, but the uh, yeah, it, it it's really neat. It's cool, but it's not like my thing. So. I'm in love with it now. I'm in love with I'm in love with the racing simulator. I think it's the funnest thing, funnest pastime ever because here in Idaho, I mean in Idaho, right? It's cold outside. We can't really we can go out and drive, right? But sometimes you don't want to go drive, you want to get the car all all all, all dirty and stuff yeah. like that. But you need to scratch that itch, right? Because you want to go out and experience something fun or drive something. So I go, man, that driving simulator has put me in a good mood. It's getting me out playing with cars, whether I'm racing something or not. So I'm at like an A because I don't think it's a necessity. Like I don't think everybody has to have one, obviously. But if yeah. you can build one and experience one, hmm. oh, it's a freaking blast. I get that. 
I, 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 you know, I'd give you the I'd give you the B, split the difference with you. I'll give I'll give you the B. Oh you yeah. Know, but for me, you know, I'm a C D kind of. Okay. All right. All right. I do like the gear. So that's why I think B. The gear is fun. The yeah, gear is exciting. Yeah, I like all that. All I know stuff. it's fun. It's fun kind of putting it together. I and like looking at it. I like having it more than I like using it. Yeah. All right. Well, well, B. I'll take that. I'm happy with that. Right. Yeah. I think the, the, all the racing sim people out there will be happy with that as well. So uh, next up here, kind of going back to the, uh, the talk about coatings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We have a picture here, it doesn't really make sense, but it's just a car picture. PPF. I've changed on that as well. Um, I, think it's, I think it's an A for me now. Um, I always want to not do it if I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has come a long way. Okay. You know, I was despised PPF because it used to be yellow and thick and gross and, you know, get all the edges all dirty. And now, yeah, yeah. I mean, these two cars are 100% covered, every square inch in PPF. And they look yeah. pretty fantastic. They look pretty good. So it's polishable. You can kind of refresh it. Yep. Um, and so I, I think it's an A. It's really beneficial to, you know, especially a special car. Okay. So, yeah. I'll meet you at an A. I think PPF, I mean, for it, it's kind of, it's king there because it's just, if you can afford it and if you could do it, if you're buying a new car and you can go get something PPF or your paint's perfect and original and things like that, it's amazing. I don't like removing it. I think it sucks to remove, which is why I don't think it's an S. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that it's not an absolute necessity, but I think that if you can afford it, if you can make it happen, then I think it's an A. The problem I think with PPF with um, with a lot of people is that I think you get you spend too much money on a car that's not worth it. If I'm buying okay. any car sub eighty thousand bucks, I'm not getting PPF on it. Sorry, Jimmy. GR, yeah, GR, just, GR Corolla doesn't make the PPF cut. Yeah, I, I mean, or, or certainly I'm gonna I'm gonna really try to keep the amount of PPF I'm doing to a minimal. Okay. Yeah. Um, because chances are, if your car is sub 80. 80k and you're young you're not going to have it for very long so you're investing a lot of money in something that the dealer that you're going to trade it into doesn't give a crap about the chances uh, i would really micromanage how i'm following people you know on highways and things mm -hmm. like that yeah so i would get minimal you know chips and, and issues like okay. that uh, but you know if i'm buying a tesla model 3 you know it's seventy thousand bucks i'm not going to spend four or five thousand dollars on ppf it's crazy yeah. And here's the problem. If you're getting good PPF, you're going to spend like a full front clip should be at least three grand. Yeah. If it's less than that, then that guy's probably not very good or just starting out. So, you know, if you buy a, you know, you buy a, a, a $58,000 car and you spend, you know, 15% of the value of the car on paint protection film, I just don't see the value in that there. You're never going to get that back. It might help you in the open market if you're trying to sell versus other people you're competing against. But generally speaking, you're wasting your money, especially full okay. car wraps. Okay. I think, yeah, I, 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 can, I can see your point there. I just, I think PPF, if you, again, if you, if, you, if you think that you're gonna love whatever it is and you think you need to have it protected and it's a peace of mind thing, so it you'll- help so, your user experience, your enjoyment experience. If right? you can enjoy, yeah, if you, yeah, it allows you to enjoy your car mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. the way it should be enjoyed and PPF makes a difference to do that, then I say do it because the peace of mind that that's gonna offer and it's going to be worth it because- But yeah, if you're, you're not funding your 401k or you're not, um, you don't have an emergency fund or, you know, mm. I know I've been there, you know, I'm like, mm. you know what, I'm going to buy this, these wheels or this exhaust rather than doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just, uh, PPF is not that, okay. not worth making sacrifices in life. We're still at an A. I'm going to take that right there. I'm going to place it. So we're going to say it's an A. All right, so um, we have a couple of fun ones left here, which I think which I'm excited okay. about. But here's one. Here's one that I'm kind of, kind of passionate about, but maybe you're passionate about as well. We talked about the Milwaukee tools, but there's mm -hmm. one particular thing in Milwaukee, right? Mm -hmm. The Milwaukee polishers. Mm. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's probably an A. A. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I think it's a C. Yeah, you're wrong. It's no, the not, it's the no. best current polisher. It's not. Oh yeah, it is. And it's not. It's not. What's better? The Rupes. No. The new Rupes coming out? Yes. It's oh, the well, new Rupes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hundred, yeah. Oh, it's hundred percent. Yeah, but comparison to the Rupes LHR 15, like the Mark III, the electric powered one, 
No, it's it's just it's almost as good and it's cordless. What? Yeah. No, the 100%. Mark III, the 15 Mark III, plug it into the wall Mark III, yeah. blows that out of the water. No. Like not even in comparison. No, no, like literally, no. it's not even comparable. No, it's a little, I would say maybe it's 10% better, but it, it, you gotta deal with the cord. So now the cord makes me choose the Milwaukee. That Milwaukee, I love Milwaukee tools. I love, obviously I gave it a freaking mm -hmm. S rating, mm -hmm. right? That tool, is clunky, the trigger feels weird, I don't like the way the dial feels, and the battery is heavy. I'm never using that tool, I'm never buying it. The battery's not heavy. The battery's not a problem. It, it, you kind of, you, you learn the transition. Um, so I'm interested so in the new C. Rupes, and I, you know, I used it a little, a little bit, but. That new Rupes will be an S tier tool, 100%. I yeah, know I, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm, I'm Shoot, I think it looks way cooler, it's way lighter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm down, the battery's gonna be terrible, but you okay. know, we'll have to deal with their batteries. It's stupid that they have three batteries for three tools. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay. But that's Italian lazy, that's the Italian hey. coming in. But I don't really care much about that. I know a lot of people do, like, I gotta buy all these stupid batteries. Um, <laughs> But yeah, currently, because the Rupes yeah. isn't out yet, yeah. it's coming in weeks. Yeah. Um, but the current, I think, best overall polisher, five inch normal polisher, is the Milwaukee. Currently. Okay. So you're the best polisher ever of all time is the Merca, you know, three inch. That thing's pretty amazing. I would, we probably could but that, that one has this, flaws and it doesn't have a freaking trigger lock. Doesn't. And the trigger's in the wrong spot. It doesn't. So I said, so I'm saying C on this, you said what, A? Yeah. So we have to meet in the middle of B. That's fine. I don't okay. really care because it's gonna disappear, I think, when the roof has okay. takes okay. over. All right, the JBL Flip 4 garage solution package for sound. <laughs> this decay, this doesn't have to be specifically- Does that even still exist? Yes, or it might be on the Flip 5. How, How much, much is that? Somebody look that up. How much it's is that It's like 100, 100 bucks, right? Something like that. It's, it, it's, a, it's a little tank, that thing is a Beast. You're wasting a hundred dollars. No, it pumps out the base. You got, yeah, I mean, it's gonna, any garage is gonna benefit from something like that. Yeah, yeah, nope. Absolutely, 100%, what's our pricing on that? Uh, $75. Oh no, my oh, gosh. That's a great deal. 75 bucks for a JBL Flip 4, I'm buying like four. I don't think the I'm gonna grill sink them all together. 75 bucks. <laughs> so. This is a waste of my time. Here. Okay, so let's just, okay, let's just say, okay, this, we don't maybe have to say specifically the JBL Flip 4, but mm -hmm. let's just talk about the broad, uh, just audio, garage audio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can make the progression from a plug-in type, you know, streaming type speaker of some sort, mm -hmm. uh, and then your next, you know, progression would be to do some sort of powered set of, set of speakers, okay. and, and then from there, like the speakers where they have their own amplifier and everything, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. from there, then you get into more sophisticated solutions. In my garage, this is like full 5.1 surround mm -hmm. uh, with dedicated, you know, monoblock amplifiers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. I'm not getting the full benefit of it, but I love it. And so I want to put it in here. But to me, there's two places I listen to music and really the only two places. And it's the garage, the garage and the car. Two very mm -hmm. poor listening environments, but it's where I listen. And so I'm going to put good stuff. You saw sure. I had all these new, new speakers showing up for my Evo. Yeah, yeah. And I have these crazy speakers in the garage, different systems in both garages I have. Okay. I value it a lot. And okay. so your JBL Flip gets an F. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'd rather have that than nothing. So, I'd rather have that than playing through my, you know, iPhone speaker. Yeah, absolutely. So that's so we'll why. Give it a, we'll give the, your choice a D. And then you can very easily work your way up the ladder by just spending a few, few extra bucks. Okay, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put it, I'll, I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give you that. I don't think it's the- Like a I, pair I, of Blue Sound Pulse M's in your garage would be great. I'm not listening to music that much in the garage. I like the idea of listening to music in the garage, but realistically, sometimes like, I'm just, I like the silence sometimes. I just like, I just like, I don't even mind the silence. You, I just you can solve thing. all this with a good set of headphones, you know? Yeah, probably. And then you're not disturbing your neighbors or anything, but I like the impact of great audio in the garage. Okay, Sonic Tools. Mm. This is gonna be, this is actually gonna be kind of more your field because I've just now become acquainted with Sonic tools as I just actually Yeah, I mean, for, through them. for me, I think Sonic's an A uh, because of their organization system. Okay. Uh, and then I think you get to S 
when we, you know, and you start to curate and you start to buy, you know, great tools per category, and okay. you start to curate and put tools together. I choose Sonic over, say, something like Snap-on. It's one fifth the price, okay. uh, and in many cases, I think you know a better solution. Some 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 Snap-on tools are better, but never in no category do I think I would choose a Snap-on over something else. Um, so I, I think I, I put Sonic for me. For me, it's A just because of the organization setup. Okay. I would probably never spend as much as the Sonic stuff is. I mean, not really. I, I, pro I probably wouldn't. Let's honestly. say you're making a million to a year. Yeah. No, probably. There you go. So I start making a million to a year, then it will start to make sense. But yeah, it doesn't make sense for me. I, I mean, it's all nice. What I if love you're the making organization. 380? Probably not. Still, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if the experience of the, a click of a wrench or a, you know a, a yeah. screwdriver is going to really make me justify it over. What if a you're making fifty set. grand, but you're a mechanic? Possibly, right? Because that's your livelihood, and you ha and you have to invest in your livelihood. And I could see that because it's like you're investing in yourself at that point, not investing in a side hobby of. But I think with Sonic, this is my advice, everybody. With Sonic and tools. You're not going down the sonic path unless you want the foam. Their foam inlays are the best foam inlays in the world, hands down, no question. Others are starting to make it. They can probably come up with something very similar. They've done the best job of taking their tools, putting it in foam, and keeping it nice, neat, and organized. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and uh, you said A. I'll just, I'll just say sure. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you I'll don't just have say an sure. I don't have an opinion. And I don't have an opinion until I'm making 1.2, right? <laughs> So, I just uh, made up a number. I, I know, that's, that's a good Maybe it's thing. 200 grand, whatever. Hey, even, that's, even that sounds great. So, um, all right, so moving on to our last one. We're going to end here on a fun one. Uh, throwback here, Okay. zebra cakes. Mmm, this has changed. It's now an F for me. Oh, really? Perfect. So, so I've made a personal discovery in that um, all white flour, Kay. all white rice, Okay. Uh, and almost all in the U.S. if it's non-organic um, has uh, full, it's sprayed with folic acid. In, okay. It's called enriched, yeah, enriched white yeah. flour, yeah. which is nonsense. They're just spraying it with something that a large percent of the population, from what I from what I can tell, can't really process. So it becomes okay. sort of toxic to me. Okay. Uh, and so it, I think it's part of the, the OCD problem I have is that okay. folic acid has been problematic. And so I will never eat another zip cake again. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's done. I'm done with all white. You know, I didn't eat those French delicious hamburger rolls. Yeah, they were so yeah, good. They're so the so Publix, good. but they're good. using enriched yeah. white flour. I can't, and there's never going to have okay. another taste. Just like I've never had alcohol, I've never had coffee. Yeah. Um, I will never have another zebra, zebra cake. cake again. I it's guess. in the same category of alcohol, coffee, yeah. zebra cakes, right? It's probably right? worse. Yeah. It's, probably, <laughs> it's kill you faster. Um, okay, so 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 okay. Well, then with the taste of a zebra cake, you still rate it an F? Oh God, no! It's a it's an S plus. Okay, most delicious thing ever. I'm gonna say I think they're so gross. I think they're absolute. I think the 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 what's it called? The waxiness that they have. I hate oh, that. It leaves God, a I film in your it's mouth delicious. that you have to use a tongue scraper to get yeah, out. Yeah. Which I'm trying to get him to convert it to a tongue scraper. So, but I'm gonna take his F though, and I'm gonna run with it because I think that they're an F. Yeah, I think that they're. It's gotta be. I it's think that they're gross. Yeah. And. We are done. We've done it. We've finished our tier list. What That's do you good. think? That's fun. It's fun, right? You might steal this idea. Yeah. You might have to steal this idea. Now, this is a general broad overview of many different things, right? And sure. so we can always, you know, try to make these a little bit more direct, or you can actually pinpoint yeah. certain products or whatever it is. But this has been just a general kind of semi-obsessed, but also just kind of just a hangout talk, right? Yeah. Kind of what we do. So. Um, Hopefully you guys will let, let us know what you guys thought because we're going to go ahead and put this link uh, down in the description below so you guys can give this a rating for yourself. Uh, rate these as you will or if you guys have any uh, suggestions on maybe something we should have rated differently, put it down in the comments below. Let us know what you think. Do you agree with us? Disagree? We're curious to hear. So uh, you'll do it again? Sure. Yeah? Anytime. Yeah. yeah. This is fun. It's fun. All right. So I, um, hopefully I, I, I brought some people in and then I then they went pushed away. Them then away. Pushed them away and then maybe they came back. Came back in. Yeah. It was an emotional roller coaster and that's what you expect here at the Rag Company YouTube channel. That's the most that we can do. So yeah. um, anyways, as always, if you guys enjoy the tier list content and want to see more, uh, please make sure you give us a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, check out Obsessed Garage and stay tuned for more videos right here at the Rag Company.